Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this afternoon's webinar. I'm pleased that you are spending your lunch hour with us to discuss this important topic. It is just uh, about a minute before noon. We're giving folks some time to filter in to the webinar room. And so we will be getting started in just a moment. In the meantime, um, if you want to have the closed captions on, there should be a, a button at the bottom or the top, depending on your layout of your Zoom, where it says captions. So you'll be able to see captions in both English and French. All right, everyone. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon's webinar, Learning to Fly, Sunnyside Home's Journey to Accreditation in the Butterfly Approach. It is co-hosted by FCO and CARP Ottawa. Today's guest speakers are Lindsay Marinovich and Julie Wheeler from Senior Services at the Region of Waterloo, and they'll be sharing their journey with you today. First, a land acknowledgement. Uh, FCO's work and the work of long-term care homes, family councils, family caregivers, takes place on the traditional indigenous territories across the province we now call Ontario. And our team is thankful to be able to live and work on this land. First Nations peoples were the original inhabitants of the land that's now called Canada. And in fact, there are over 46 treaties and other agreements that cover the territory of Ontario. Never mind the many, many treaties, uh, agreements, languages, peoples across the country as a whole. I'm coming to you today from Hamilton. And the city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. It's land that's covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant. And that was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. And it's an agreement that set settlers, descendants of settlers, have been invited to partake and to take part in so that we can continue to share in and care for these resources. We're appreciative of the First Nations, Métis and Inuit people who have cared for these territories since time immemorial and who continue to contribute to the strength of long-term care homes and communities across the province. Acknowledging the land is an indigenous protocol used to express gratitude to those who reside here and to honor the indigenous people who have lived and worked on this land historically and still do today. It gives us the opportunity to appreciate the unique role and relationship that each of us has with the land and can be a gentle reminder of the broader perspectives that can expand our understanding to encompass the longstanding rich history of the land and our privileged role in residing here. I strongly encourage you to learn more about the people, territories, and the languages of the land on which you live, work, and care. There's a great website called native-land.ca, and you can put in your address there, and it'll actually tell you uh, whose territory you're on, whose land you're on. And so definitely check it out um, and start or continue your journey towards Indigenous reconciliation. Before I turn things over to our guest speakers, a few logistics. You'll notice that all the participants are in listen-only mode via the webinar. So you can hear us, but we can't hear you. If you have any technical issues, please use the chat. Uh, we've protected time today for an interactive Q&A. And at that time, we'll ask you to use the Q&A box to pose your questions. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available to participants following our time together on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. You'll get more information in our weekly e-bulletin. It's now my pleasure to turn it over to today's co-host, Kathy Wright of CARP Ottawa. Kathy, over to you. Thank you very much, Sam. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon to kick off our fall webinar series. 
CARP Ottawa is very pleased to be co-hosting our webinar series with Family Councils Ontario once again. And we'd like to extend our thanks to Sam and Leah in particular for their support and help with logistics and promotion of these webinars. We would also like to commend FCO for the great work they do for all the Family Councils in Ontario. So as CARP Ottawa, we see ourselves as champions for change in long-term care from institutions to homes. And for the last four years, we've been working with other CARP chapters and like-minded organizations in Ontario to highlight the homes that have already implemented new approaches to care with positive outcomes. This has meant creating a warm, caring environment that feels like home where residents, staff, and families all feel safe, valued, and respected, and where residents engage in meaningful activities according to their abilities and what brings them joy. And we have seen this kind of transformation even in large, older buildings. We get lots of questions about that, so anything is possible. And we are seeing some momentum, although at a snail's pace, as more long-term care homes are adopting these innovative models and you'll be hearing about one from Lindsay and Julie shortly. We believe that if we don't fix the long-term care home system now, after two years of horrific tragedies, the residents will be forgotten once again for decades or until another pandemic hits. We also believe that the time is right now as we have the solutions before us. Some of these innovative approaches, such as the Butterfly and Eden, have been operating in other countries for up to 20 years now. And we believe that there are probably 20 odd that are now in either full implementation or in the process of in Ontario, and certainly in other parts of uh, Canada. So we need action now, and we need to support those innovative leaders who have taken the leap and encourage others to follow suit. You too can be a champion for change long-term care now from institutions to home. You can do this by forwarding this information to your friends, your contacts, your MPPs, your MPs. And you can also help by sharing our website at www.changeltcnow.ca where you'll see our monthly webinar recordings, our blog posts and other resources. So I now have the pleasure of introducing Lindsay Marinovich and Ju Julie Wheeler from the region of Waterloo, who will talk to you about their implementation at, at Sunnyside Home in Waterloo. For over 19 years, Lindsay has been committed to improving the quality of life for older adults and is now the person and emotion-focused care lead for the region of Waterloo. And I had the pleasure of meeting Julie when both she and I were executive directors of different Alzheimer's Society chapters many moons ago. <laughs> and uh, Julie is now the director of senior services for the region of Waterloo. So thank you to Julie and Lindsay for your leadership and for taking the time to present to us today on Sunnyside's transformation from institution to home. So over to you, Lindsay. Uh, thank you so much, Kathy. Um, it's great to be here today and share our journey with all of you. I'm just going to put my presentation up on the screen and then I'm going to turn it over to Julie to start it off for us. Thanks, Kathy, and thanks, Lindsay. Uh, it's so nice to be here with you today and um, to share uh, something that I know uh, Lindsay and I and Sunnyside are so passionate about. Um, and so I can't think of a better way to spend our lunch and we're really happy that you're all with us today. Before we start the presentation, Lindsay and I just wanna tell you a little bit more about ourselves and, and why we are uh, in this work and, and why we're passionate about it. Uh, my career has been dedicated to working with organizations that strive to improve the quality of life for older adults. And in particular, I'm uh, passionate about working with organizations that serve persons who are living with a dementia. I'm a very proud mother of two teenage girls and two dogs and live in Wilmot Township with my husband and my family. In my life, I have been a caregiver for uh, multiple family members and a caregiver in my professional life. And I understand uh, very, very closely the journey that people and those that they care about face in our health system. I have had the 
the privilege and the pleasure of experiencing the strengths of our health system, and I have struggled through its weaknesses. I believe that there has never been a time more important than now to actively pursue systemic change. So I'm honored to be here today to share with you our experience at Sunnyside in the region of Waterloo, and I hope to learn from all of you on the call uh, so that we can take what we learned today and continue to move forward in pursuing change. Lindsay, do you want to share a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you so much, Julie. Uh, my name is Lindsay Marinovich, and like Kathy said, I'm the per person-centered and emotion-focused care lead uh, for senior services at the region of Waterloo. Um, and this work for me is absolutely a dream come true. I've worked uh, with the region of Waterloo for the last 19 years, um, but previous to that, I actually started working in long-term care when I was 16 years old. It was a part-time job in high school, um, and after school, I went uh, to deliver recreation activities to the people living there. Um, and although I was very young, it was a very natural fit for me um, at that time. The moments that I loved the most working there um, were the times that I had the opportunity just to connect with someone, for them to share their story with me, um, for me to use that information to make their life better. Um, and that led me down my career path of studying recreation therapy. So I've been at Sunnyside Home for a number of years, and there was probably a time that I started thinking about whether or not I would want to live in long-term care. Um, and sadly, the answer at that time was, I didn't think that I did. So I made it my goal um, moving forward in my work to make long-term care the place that I would feel comfortable living myself, the place that I would feel comfortable sending um, someone that I love to live and supporting them to live there. And I'm so pleased that Sunnyside Home has adopted the butterfly approach over the last few years, um, because I can truly say that Sunnyside Home is a place that I would feel comfortable living myself um, you know, as I'm aging. So thank you so much for in inviting us to be here today. Um, Julie, I'll pass it back over to you. Thanks, Lindsay. So I wanna tell you a little bit about Sunnyside uh, and our campus of care. We are um, a municipally operated long-term care home and uh, operate um, on a beautiful campus located in Kitchener. Our, we offer an array of services and serve the communities of Kitchener, Waterloo, and Cambridge, as well as the townships of Wellesley, Wilmot, Woolwich, Wool Woolwich and North Dumfries. So our campus, as I mentioned, is located in Kitchener. And on a normal day, so pre, I would say pre-pandemic, uh, we estimate that approximately 1,000 people come to our campus every day. We offer services that range from our Sunnyside Wellness Center, which is a rehab uh, fitness program and offer services such as physiotherapy, foot care and massage. We offer multiple community Alzheimer programs, which are adult day programs that specialize in dementia care, including a program called YODA, which stands for the Young Onset of uh, dementia Association. We also offer a variety of respite options, including our overnight stay program. We offer a homemaking uh, support program, which helps individuals in the community who need homemaking services to maintain independence and housing. And we also offer an array of housing options, such as supportive housing, uh, which is an assisted living program that serves older adults living with mental health and frailty. And last but not least, Sunnyside Long-Term Care Home. Uh, we are a home that welcomes 263 residents. We are the largest long-term care home in Waterloo Region and were founded over 150 years ago, starting off as a home for the aged. The Region of Waterloo, along with our division, Senior Services, strives to be a world-class community where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, where people feel cared for and about, and to create a place where everyone can belong. This fits in really well uh, with our priorities as a division, and we strive to be a community where every person can live their best life. I wanted to start by sharing uh, this uh, comment made by Christine Bryden. Uh, some of you may be familiar with her work. Um, from our perspective, um, long-term care homes provide much needed care and shelter to those living in our communities. But long-term care homes are so much more than care and shelter. And over the years, there's been a growing recognition that change is desperately needed to transition away from institutional-based models of care to person-centered and emotion-focused models of care. In this comment by Christine Bryden, a biochemist and mother of three, Christine was diagnosed with young-onset dementia at the age of 46 years old. 
She is a recognized, passionate advocate who has documented and shared her experience of living with dementia. She talks um, so el eloquently about the importance of seeing people through more than what you just see on a face level. We need to connect with people on an emotional level and that even while cognition may change, the emotional capacity or feelings always remain present. This need for change has been voiced by so many in the system, the residents that we serve, the staff who work on our behalf, the families and care partners who openly talk about the need to be together, not just serve them. Our staff speak about the importance of wanting to come to work and make a difference, and yet being left each day, leaving work, feeling more like they were on an assembly line, moving from one task to the next. Our reason for pursuing the butterfly approach was based on the principle that living a life where your needs are met, but you are lonely, bored, and without purpose is quite simply just not living. Before the pandemic, back in January, 2020, when we first launched this initiative, I remember feeling like there could never be a better time in that moment for us to move forward with this vision. In January 2020, I felt much as to what Lindsay said, that I had an obligation to create a home that I would move into myself, that I would be proud to live in and that reflected all of my needs. At the time, though Sunnyside Home uh, was doing some really uh, incredible work, work that I was very proud of, it always felt to me like we were not raising the, the bar high enough. And so in January, 2020, we announced, I think it was called Vision 2020 to pursue this new approach to care. Little did I know what was around the corner and that we would be facing a global pandemic just a few short months away. Thinking back on it and preparing for today's presentation, I it is, it's actually incredible to me to think that at that time, I thought there couldn't have been a more significant reason to do this work. And then living through the pandemic, at the time I was the administrator of the long-term care home and seeing the tragedy that unfolded across Ontario, that has now become quite possibly the single largest burning platform for change that I could ever imagine. So I wanna talk a little bit about what the butterfly approach is. Well, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, so the butterfly approach is a person-centered and emotion-focused model of care that started in the United Kingdom through Meaningful Care Matters, formerly known as Dementia Care Matters. The butterfly approach recognizes that long-term care is a home and not a workplace, that getting to know the unique stories and experiences and the interests of the people who live in the home is critical. Engaging people in activities and giving them meaning and purpose every day is critical is vital to its success and building meaningful relationships by sharing and offering comfort with those we serve, but also establishing meaningful relationships with their families. And lastly, transforming the environment to look and feel more like home. Kathy mentioned in her opening about some of the movement that's happened across the province and across Canada and across the world. And you, Kathy also mentioned that, that we worked together many, many years ago and I remember working for the Alzheimer's Society many moons ago and learning about approaches that were happening across Canada and across the world and the recognition that people deserve to live a full life and to live environments that would look and feel like our own homes. And it's amazing to me that we're here today. And although there's certainly a movement happening, I feel very much uh, the same way as was stated at the start of this presentation, that we have uh, obligation to learn from what we have lived through over the past several years and to push this agenda as far as we possibly can. I'm so excited to see the butterfly approach starting to grow across Canada. We have, uh, we are the only butterfly home in Waterloo region, but there are eight accredited butterfly homes now in Ontario, 10 accredited butterfly homes across Canada and one accredited acute care setting in Ontario, which actually located in Toronto at the hospital and there are 11 long-term care homes in Ontario that are currently working towards butterfly accreditation. Back when we started this work in January 2020 at the time there was only one accredited butterfly home in Ontario and so we certainly have come a long way. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how we arrived at the butterfly approach and why we chose this approach to care. 
Sunnyside Home achieved uh, accreditation for two home areas, Button Works and Laurel Creek. Um, at Sunnyside Home, uh, those areas serve approximately 47 people. And we were accredited back in August of 2022. But our journey actually started much earlier than that, uh, approximately a decade ago. We started with a program called Hush No Rush, and we're, we're focusing on teaching staff techniques that would avoid triggering expressions of behavior and really make an emphasis on being quiet and trying to slow down um, the pace of, of things of life in those home areas. We later went on to uh, train many staff, over 150 staff in dementia ability, um, and had great success with that. Staff really relished the opportunity to have practical hands-on tools to allow them to engage with residents and to provide education and understanding about the importance of learning about each person who lives in our home, uh, what matters to them and how we can interact with them and, and establish a positive relationship. In 2018, we pursued Eden training for our leadership team. And then in 2000, late 2018, we established our own formal philosophy of care called Still Me. And this philosophy of care was established in a vision where we would create a community that provided people with the opportunity to experience joy, purpose, and something meaningful each day. We took tangible steps to move away from the medical model and to make our home feel more like home. We transformed our spaces and places, uh, incorporating bright colors and activities that would draw people in. We introduced dolls and electronic pets into our household to provide love and comfort and developed activity kits so that every person, staff, families, visitors could engage in activities with, with the people who live in our home. And we started to think about how we could utilize nature and activities outdoors so that people could enjoy uh, the beautiful grounds that we're surrounded by. And then in, in 2019, we uh, decided to move forward with the butterfly approach, feeling like we were at the point of our journey where we were ready to make an investment into our model of care and to um, officially establish ourselves as a new approach. We were successful in receiving funding from the Sunnyside Foundation, formed an, an interdisciplinary team, and began our work back in January 2020. For those of you who are on the call today who either uh, work with long-term care or have family members living in long-term care, yes, I think if there's one thing I should say here, it's that change takes time and that this really was an evolution for us and helped us to establish not only a, a foundation for this work, but also to really be able to articulate the vision that we had and to achieve success in it. So when I think back to, you know, what was the thing that tipped us over into deciding that we needed to, to move forward with a formal approach to care? We felt at the time that we had equipped the staff with the tools and the resources. We had brought in skilled educators and trainers to help staff funnel their talents into practical strategies. Uh, we had changed the spaces and places to be interactive, inviting, and engaging. And yet we still didn't feel that we were achieving uh, our vision of creating a place where each person could experience joy and purpose. And after looking at many models of care and seeing the benefits and the impact, we realized that we needed something that pulled it all together, the environment, the tools and strategies, and the focus on person and emotion-based care. From our review and experience, we felt that Meaningful Care Matters offered the most comprehensive certification process to help us fulfill this vision. Oftentimes, people have the perception that one of the most important changes in becoming a butterfly home or in pursuing the butterfly approach to care is changing the environment. And although that was a certainly an important change for us, um, it, it wasn't from my perspective, and I know Lindsay will talk about this, it was not uh, the most important thing that we did. The color, the textures, and the objects that we used to reach those who are living in the home areas um, were intended to, to um, connect with people on an emotional rather than cognitive level, and, and of course, to reflect the people who live there. Um, but it was enabling the staff to make that connection, to be able to identify and understand the people who lived in our home, um, looking beyond their physical needs and empowering them to establish relationships with residents at an emotional level at every opportunity. So 
at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Lindsay, who's going to talk a little bit about our accreditation process. Thanks so much, Julie, for providing some really great context um, as to how we ended up with the butterfly approach. I'm going to share a little bit more about what that journey looked like and how we uh, how we moved from making that decision to becoming a fully accredited butterfly home. So we started our journey, um, as Julie said, long before we decided to implement Butterfly. But in January 2020, um, we had a public launch at Sunnyside Home. You'll see that photo there on the left. There were probably over 150 people in attendance. Looking back on how full that hall was um, and no masks in that hall, it seems like a different world than where we are today. But it was truly a joyful day for Sunnyside where we welcomed the Meaningful Care Matters team on site and officially launched our tent to become a butterfly home. Two months later, unfortunately, um, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic and our journey was put on pause. I want to say our vision was not put on pause, but our butterfly journey itself was put on pause. In spring 2021, we felt like we were at a point where we could start to pick up the work and we started training staff in the butterfly approach. And then in January of 2022, we were hit with Omicron and probably our worst outbreak um, through the entire pandemic, and we had to pause again. But of course, we remained steadfastly committed to our vision, and we started again. We had our final audit with Meaningful Care Matters in July 2022, where we were given a level one standing, which is the highest um, butterfly accreditation standing that one can receive. Julie will speak to this later. And after that point, we've been working on how we sustain that model and sustain that accreditation, and we'll be coming up on our one-year reaccreditation uh, very soon. Just like to share a little bit about what, are, what a butterfly home looks and feels like. So as Julie said earlier, the home areas are full of color and life. And this really means that they reflect the story of the people living there. As you walk through a butterfly home, you should be able to look at the walls, look at the tables and see and understand who's living in that space because you should see their history. You should see the things that are important to them, which always gives you something to talk about and something to connect about. There's objects and items in reach that give meaning and purpose and can help change a moment. So staff, families, volunteers, anyone passing through that home area can easily grab something to change a moment or engage with someone. There's comfortable spaces created throughout the home area where people can spend time together, uh, a lot of love seats and areas for two, three, four people to gather and share time together. But as Julie said, a butterfly home is not about the environment. It's not just about the look. It's about teaching staff to work differently. So we had provided significant training to staff through uh, the course of this implementation. We actually trained 165 uh, long-term care staff in all disciplines um, from PSWs, RPNs, RNs, uh, management, our facilities team, our housekeepers, and our food services staff in the same principles of the butterfly approach because it really is a whole team approach. We started training in the spring of 2021 and at that time, we decided that a virtual learning option would be best. Meaningful Care Matters was very supportive of flexible training options and worked with us to develop that virtual training, which we delivered over five days to staff. The training modules included an overview of the butterfly approach in person-centered care, a sharing module, um, because it's so important to be able to share ourselves with the people we care for. We can't expect them to share and develop relationships with us if they don't know something about, our, uh, about us as well. Removing what's called controlling care. Um, so that really means putting autonomy and choice back in the hands of the people we care for in every opportunity throughout the day. Meaningful engagement and meal times. So keeping people busy and things that provide them with purpose and meaning and joy um, and making meal time more of an experience and not just a task throughout the day. Supporting people in the later experiences who may be having more sensory needs. Um, and communication and really teaching staff to understand the language of dementia. Another important element of the butterfly approach is matched home areas. So in butterfly homes, people who share similar interests and experiences in their dementia journey 
are grouped together in matched houses. This is based on the work of Naomi Fail and um, her four, uh, four stages of the lived experience for people with dementia. They've been adapted by Meaningful Care Matters um, to be called the early experience, differing realities, repetitive emotion, and later experiences. Matching people together in their experience of the dementia journey helps the staff to better identify people's unique needs and meet them where they're at. And it also allows them the freedom to be themselves and cuts down on some of the um, some of the anxieties that people might feel being in a very mixed up home environment. Staff on each home area will become experts in caring for the people um, who are in the early and the mid and the later stages of dementia because the home areas are more specialized. I mentioned earlier that meal times are so important. If you think about your own day, you wake up in the morning and you have breakfast, you have a meal, um, you do your work and you're busy and then you have lunch. Meal time is always a chance to sit down, to reflect, to connect. And it's such an important part of the day in the butterfly approach. It's not just for nourishment, but it's an opportunity to connect socially with others. Meal times in butterfly homes look a little bit different. You'll see a photo there of one of our dining rooms. That's our Button Works home area, which is the home area for people in the earlier to mid experiences of their dementia journey. And here people sit together and they eat family style. Not all residents might eat at the same time. We have 27 people living in Button Works and sometimes we have a full dining room, but we also allow the people the ability and the freedom and the flexibility to eat when they want to. Items and objects are available on the table to engage with at mealtime. It might be recipes of items similar to what's on the menu, it might be jokes or conversation cards. Um, it might just be objects related to food, like a spatula um, or some different baking supplies. It really depends on the theme of the day and what people are doing that day. Residents are offered visual choices throughout meals. So that includes the drink that they receive um, as well as the food that they receive. And in addition to mealtimes, food is available throughout the day in the butterfly approach. So if you look at the photo on the screen, you'll actually see a red refrigerator behind the table and that's our snack station. So the fridge is always stocked with different items of different textures, um, yogurts, fruits, muffins, um, some juices and things that people can use to nourish themselves and help themselves to something when they're hungry, just like they would in their own home. Getting to know the people that live in the home is so, so important to success in the butterfly approach, connecting and building meaningful relationships. So we have a couple of ways that we share the life stories of the residents here, and our family members are so helpful in providing this information and keeping this up to date. Resident profiles are posted in all of the rooms. This describes what's important to the person living there, uh, who's important to them, and how the staff can help them to have a better day. We post word clouds outside of the rooms and on the word clouds, you might find uh, small short words or phrases that are really important to that person. So someone who really likes hamburgers might have the word hamburger in bold print on their word cloud. And the staff can use that as a really quick opportunity to pick out a word or two that they can use to connect with that person during care. Personalizing the inside of the resident rooms is very important, and we certainly encourage people to bring in their own items from home to make their rooms more comfortable. And also their bedroom doors. Um, the walls in a butterfly home are painted different colors, but the doors are also wrapped in different colors to look like the front door of a home. And if a resident would recognize something like a, a street number or a wreath or a photo, if that would help them find their room, um, we certainly encourage and support people to put those items up. I think I mentioned earlier that implementing the butterfly approach uh, takes a whole team. So this not only includes the, stair, the care staff who are spending time one-to-one -one with the residents in the home areas, it includes our engagement team, recreation and music therapy, our housekeeping team and our facilities staff, um, as well as leaders and managers in the home, our volunteers, and of course, family members. 
We encourage family members to get involved, like I said, by sharing information about the residents. They're invited to join us at the meal timetable if they choose to. Um, and we've had a number of meetings and town halls with families throughout the process to keep them involved and informed. So for anyone interested, I just wanted to share a little bit about the accreditation process and how we arrived at this, uh, this result. Meaningful Care Matters was on site to perform three qualitative observational audits, and that helps to measure the progress. And what that really means is that Meaningful Care Matters comes to Sunnyside Home, and they spend about six hours in our common areas on our butterfly home areas. They spend that time observing, and what they're watching for is the interactions between the care staff working in the home and the people living in the home. And they're actually rating those interactions based on um, how person-centered the care is. Do they see evidence of meaningful relationships being formed? Are people being given choice and control after over how they spend their day? Are people engaged uh, or are they seated by themselves for long periods of time? Um, they really are trying to get a sense of what it feels like to live in that home. They also review a 100-point environmental checklist, um, interview family members and staff, and they review our medication reports and care plans as well to make sure that the language is person-centered. Um, they look at things like antipsychotic use for the home, um, and they also look at the morale and the teamwork demonstrated by staff. So I said earlier that the qualitative observational audits are measuring the quality of care interactions between people living in the home and people working in the home. So they give a rating to each five minute period um, based on what type of care they see. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the five types of care are to give a little bit more context. So the, the, the most desirable care is called meaningful engagement. And this means that people in the moment are given visual choice, um, they are being asked if they for permission, um, for example, to move a chair um, or asked what they want. And people are spending some time connecting and sharing about themselves and learning about the people they care for. There's positive care, which involves, again, offering people choice. And positive care is great as well. Neutral care is um, the majority experience of people living in long-term care. And neutral care is really not providing any choice, giving people what the, uh, something that they might need without asking whether or not they want it. Um, people sat for a long period of time. And then there's controlling care, which is where the staff are controlling that experience for people and they're not given choice. So neutral care and controlling care are what we want to avoid. Um, and positive care and meaningful care, uh, meaningful engagement are what we are encouraging throughout the day. At this time, I'm going to pass it back over to Julie to talk a little bit about what the audit found. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, so as you heard, we were successful uh, last uh, summer in achieving a level one outstanding care home, and we were accredited as the first butterfly home in Waterloo Region. On the 100 uh, checklist, 100 point checklist that Lindsay referred to, we were able to achieve 97 of those indicators. And meaningful engagement or positive care between the people who live in are in the home and people working was observed for more than 70% of the day. Observations noted in our audit report included examples of engagement between, um, uh, sorry, uh, numerous examples included things such as giving each other hugs, lots of laughter music and dancing, uh, there were some balloon badminton exercises and stretching, uh, people living in the home had a strong uh, and meaningful relationship uh, with, with those in their environment and it was evident to the auditors. The auditors recognized beautiful relationships between staff and there was a real sense of family. Family members and leadership were present throughout the day were welcomed and they were treated as one of the family. So when we look at um, the impact of this work, uh, I think it's so hard. I think I find this hard to summarize because the impact has been so significant in both small and big ways. We are seeing an improved quality of life for residents, a transformed environment, and decreased use of antipsychotics. 
We're also observing improved morale of staff and improved engagement. Training in the butterfly approach has taught staff effective non-pharmacological strategies to support those who are living with a dementia. And these strategies, along with enhancements to the environment, have contributed to an overall improved quality of life. We measure the morale of staff working in these home areas in, uh, and we've done it multiple times throughout uh, this process. And we're seeing some really positive improvements in staff feeling like they have enough time to do what's important um, in their jobs and staff believing that their work is appreciated and recognized for their contributions. All of these things matter to us that we are improving the quality of life, but also that the staff have an improved work experience. We know that uh, in order for us to achieve our vision of creating a place where everybody can live their best life, we need to look at all of the people who contribute to that environment, ensuring that residents, families, and staff have the opportunity to uh, feel like their contribution um, and that their um, participation in our community matters to one another. If we look specifically at the decreased use of antipsychotics, um, this is an area where we saw really dramatic um, changes. And so you can see here that um, since 2019, uh, we've seen a reduction down from 43% of residents receiving antipsychotic medications compared to 0% in August, 2022. And then for the other home area button works, we started with 30% of residents and have uh, been able to reduce that down to 15% in August, 2022. This is an area of work that we're continuing to focus on and looking at how we can develop processes that will continue to monitor, mo continue to monitor deprescribing while ensuring that we have a person-centered approach to care. I'm gonna hand it back over to Lindsay. She's gonna talk a little bit more about the environmental changes. So we didn't want to bring these in too early because I really wanted the opportunity to highlight that although the environment does change significantly in a butterfly home, um, it's not the most important piece of the puzzle. Teaching staff to work in a different way, training staff in person-centered care and what it means to be truly person-centered, um, and changing the way that we as leaders work with and coach staff uh, in their days is far, far more important than the environment. But we can't go through a presentation about Butterfly without sharing a little bit about the environment. So here up on the screen are some photos of what Sunnyside Home looked like on Buttonworks in Laurel Creek before the Butterfly transformation. Uh, Sunnyside Home is a relatively newer home. It was built in 2002 and 2004, and we really do have a beautiful, clean building. So you'll see here, it looks very nice, um, but it's very beige. There's not a lot of color, there's not a lot of definition. So I wanted to show you what our butterfly home looks like after. This photo here shows the entrances to Buttonworks and Laurel Creek, our two butterfly home areas. And you'll see that they were transformed from something that maybe looks a little bit more like a hospital or a hotel to something that truly looks like home. Each house has their own unique look, Buttonworks is the blue cottage, and Laurel Creek is the white house with the red door. Um, we've brought the outside in with lots of photos and wraps of trees and different uh, nature scenes so that people can feel like they're walking through a park when they walk from one house to the other. And here's some photos from inside the home area. It's very bright and colorful. The walls are painted in blocks, which really helps people to find their way to their room or the dining room or wherever they're going. On the left there is our kitchenette. I spoke about that earlier. You'll see one of our themed areas here in the center. That's a nursery on our Buttonworks home area. And the photo on the right just really gives um, visualization of how the hallways look. You'll see that the doors are wrapped different colors there. There's items on the wall. This particular um, piece of art here is because the person who lives in the room across the hall was an avid gardener before she moved into Sunnyside. So we wanted to bring the garden to her. Before we move on to the q and I'd just like to share a short video that really speaks to the impact of the butterfly approach. Uh, here in the video is Kelly. Kelly is a social planning associate. 
Um, but not only is she um, a staff member at Sunnyside Home, she co-led our butterfly approach. She is also a family member. So she's actually speaking to her experience here um, as a family member on the butterfly home area. Kelly Buxton. I'm a social planning associate and I provide planning support to the senior services division. As an evaluator, I'm always looking for what I think of as tipping points. So indicators that we've gotten to the point where the change has stuck. So recently, my brother-in-law's father was welcomed onto one of the butterfly home areas as a resident. And my brother-in-law told me a story about uh, visiting his dad and sitting in the kind of our, our dining room area and his dad was really watching one of the recreation activities that was happening and really enjoying um, watching that activity and his dad turned to him and said do you think I should get drinks for everyone <laughs> and to me that was a really good indication that he felt right at home that he felt like this was a party he was hosting and it just it just told me that everything we had done was coming together this journey showed me what's possible in long-term care I've become much less tolerant of this quasi-hospital setting that we created in long-term care because it's not really something I would want, it's not what I want, we want for my family, and it, it's really lit the fire under me to help us to do things better and to help us to achieve more. So I would really encourage anyone who's involved in a butterfly transformation to stick with it because it's worth it in the end. It's going to be a tough journey, there's going to be times where you want to quit and just stop doing it. But keep going, keep pushing, because it's going to be worthwhile in the end. At this time, I'm going to pass it back on to Julie, um, who's going to talk about our next steps uh, in implementing person-centered care change across the home. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, so this September, we are, I'm <clears throat> sorry, this month, it's already September, we are uh, very excited to be um, pursuing our reaccreditation on Buttonworks and Laurel Creek. Uh, that uh, is happening in the next couple of weeks. One of the coolest things about implementing the butterfly approach to care is that we're starting to see the excitement of the model spread throughout our entire long-term care home and other programs and services that we offer. So we are really focused as an organization on um, not necessarily creating multiple butterfly home areas, but taking some of the key principles that come from that model specific to person-centered and emotion-focused care and spreading that across our home and community programs. And that's one of the reasons why Lindsay's position as person-centered and emotion-focused clarity was created. This year, we were also really honored to participate in reimagining long-term care with Healthcare Excellence Canada and receive some funding to train, uh, I believe it was almost 150 staff in the quality of interactions tool and to help staff understand the important role that they play in engaging with residents and to provide them with tools and strategies to do that well. And we're also looking at how we're going to embed the principles of person-centered care into all of our training. So how do we look at things like training staff on the use of our, um, for example, uh, falls prevention equipment, looking at things like new employee orientation, um, training around, for example, our continence program or other programs that are intended to focus on the clinical aspects of resident care and trying to approach it through a person-centered lens. So before we go uh, to, to questions and answers, I, I just wanted to uh, just, I guess, make a couple final comments before we move over to that. Uh, once again, Lindsay and I are so honored to be here today and to have the opportunity to talk with all of you about some of the work that we've been doing at Sunnyside Home. As I, as we're, as I was sitting here and preparing for this presentation, 
I was reflecting on what we've learned over the last few years and really uh, feel invigorated by the importance to continue to shift and focus from an institutional model of care to one that embraces personhood and choice. I feel, and I know Lindsay feels a moral and ethical obligation as public servants to continue to raise the bar in our home and a, and a strong sense of urgency to encourage others to do the same. Kathy mentioned at the beginning of, of this presentation that one of the greatest tragedies of the pandemic would be to not learn from it, to think about what has happened in Ontario and to actively change it. Our home has come a long way and we're so proud of what we've achieved. And I'm proud of, of, of what the staff and the residents and the families have, have jointly committed to doing. But we, like many homes, have a lot more work to do and we need to be relentlessly persistent in our efforts to change long-term care. I don't think that it's one thing or one approach that's going to fix the challenges that we're faced with. It's going to take many things, big and small. It's not a single approach, not one quick change. It's not paint on the walls. It's going to take all of us, residents, families, funders, and providers, agreeing that what we have today is just quite simply not enough. We have to take this experience and learn from it and ensure that Ontario is a leader in delivering care that we can be proud of. Lindsay, do you want to add anything to the final comments there? No, I think you wrapped it up so nicely, Julie. Um, but thank you so much for this opportunity. And it's been great sharing our journey with all of you. Well, well I'd like to thank both of you, Lindsay and Julie, for sharing your journey with us. And there is a place for Q&A, a box uh, at the bottom of the screen, should you have any questions that you'd like to ask of our presenters. But just to set, kind of set the stage, because I'm just a little confused. So you have 263 residents, I think you said, at Sunny Sunnyside, and you have home areas that you've, you've matched residents into. And you talked about Button Works and Laurel Creek, I think. So how many residents would be in each kind of space? And it, is it incorporating all 263? Like, I'm just trying to envision this. Would you like me to answer that one, Julie? Mm -hmm. um, so we have 10 home areas in our home. The okay. home areas have between 21 and 27 people. Two of those home areas, Button Works and Laurel Creek, are our secure home areas, which are specialized home areas for people with dementia. So that's where we started by implementing the butterfly approach. So Button Works and Laurel Creek, uh, Button Works has 27 and Laurel Creek has 21 residents. So between the two, there's 28 residents who are living in butterfly home areas. Um, we had to start small because this change is huge. And now that we are accredited, we're taking the key principles of the butterfly approach and person-centered care and spreading them across the home. So when uh, Julie had talked about the Healthcare Excellence Canada project that we're involved in this year um, and delivering person-centered training to 150 more staff, that's above and beyond the work that we've done on Buttonworks in Laurel Creek and is our first step in rolling this out across the home. I think I think that's great. I think what's important is to start small, get something moving, and then, as you say, move it across the home. So I think you're absolutely correct in what you've done, and you should be commended for that. Um, there was a, another question here. What additional staff or improvements to staff ratios did you feel were needed in those home areas? Yeah, that's a really good question, and it's a question that we're often asked. So Every home has a different makeup and model of staffing. In Sunnyside Home, we have PSWs that work on the home areas. Uh, we also have a role called a resident home assistant. So that position supports uh, food services, housekeeping, and personal care. And then we also have nursing staff and recreation staff. So when we started out with this project, we maintained our existing level of staffing. Approximately a year into the project, we realized that we needed to add additional recreation staff, that it was really important to have consistency seven days a week. And then the province introduced the Hours of Care Initiative, which many of you may be familiar with. And so we enhanced our staffing across the home, uh, not just in these home areas, using that funding. The other, I guess, pieces of this to consider, and if you're on the call wanting to advocate with a long-term care home or if you represent a long-term care home, I really believe that this is not the kind of work that can happen on the side of your desk. It is a, a, 
a work that needs strong leadership. And so we established a position to lead this work. And I would strongly encourage homes if you're uh, pursuing culture change in any fashion, uh, make this a part of your long-term strategy to have dedicated leadership that can become your subject expertise uh, and can help to ensure that your culture change initiatives are reflected in all the aspects of your work. That's so important that the leadership from you've got that right at the top, that they're committed to the approach and so on. Just just a question you have to, uh, in terms of your home areas. Did you consider having smaller home areas when you set it up? Like 27 seems large, but I don't know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so we had to work with the design of our home, which was established, as Lindsay mentioned earlier, in 2002, 2004. Um, if we were to design a butterfly home from scratch today, it would look very different. Uh, we would have smaller living spaces. We would have possibly more than one dining room to really create a sense of what we would all experience in our own dining rooms. Um, 27 people in a home area has been a challenge for us to create the true sense of the butterfly approach. And so we definitely would do that differently. And if you're a home that's considering redevelopment, there are a number of homes in the province and across the world that have developed the butterfly approach with new design um, perspectives. And I, I really encourage you to look at that. Um, there's been a number of questions about funding. So you received some funding from the foundation. Is that ongoing or was that one time? Yes, so we received uh, some funding from the foundation to uh, for the initial project startup, and then the ongoing costs have become a part of our operational budget. Okay. In my experience, this type of work is an investment. And so, you know, recognizing that funding is really challenging in long-term care, but certainly don't want to leave anybody with the impression that this is the kind of work that we were able just to fold into normal operations. We, we did invest in a leadership role, and we do have additional costs on an annual basis and ongoing basis in order to maintain certification, uh, same way that, that we would with any other uh, accreditor. Did you work with a consultant at the beginning, like back in January 2020, as you started all this? I know Meaningful Care Matters provides a lot of support. Did you have your own person, though, there uh, helping you or your own? Do you want to speak to that one? Yeah, so included in uh, the project cost with Meaningful Care Matters, we pro were provided with a trainer to support the project, as well as a project consultant. So our project consultant, Sally, uh, really kept us accountable, met with us monthly, either virtually or in person, uh, depending on what was possible at that time in the project. And then Nancy participated in the training and delivered some training to staff, but also trained uh, the trainers, so myself and Kelly, who you saw in the video, so that we could deliver the training as well. And, and just a quick question, because I know we're running right out of time. Very interesting presentation. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Are you working with um, a university or an educational facility just thinking you've got a lot of qualitative data there that you showed us with your antipsychotic medications, which was a great, uh, uh, great screen there. Um, so you have the qualitative data. Are you working with anyone to sort of get more quantitative information as you move forward and, and expand? Uh, so... The, so earlier we talked about the funding that we received this year uh, from Healthcare Excellence Canada. And so we are using, um, it's called the QUIS tool, which is a validated tool. At this time, we are not uh, evaluating our service model, but I do know that a number of uh, butterfly homes are uh, working with uh, researchers to um, investigate the impact of their work. And Lindsay, I don't know if you know specifically which which homes are doing that? I'm not sure, but I think Meaningful Care Matters could answer those questions. I know the Region yeah. Appeal is also doing significant work um, mm. on outcomes, but I'm not sure where they're at with that. Right. So, so there's so many questions and I have to unfortunately cut this off. There's a question about dietitians here that's fascinating too. How are you ensuring people are getting nourished and uh, you know so on with your meals? Uh, quickly, do you have an answer for that one? <laughs> 
So we do have a registered dietitian uh, on site full time. She has been very supportive of this work and also was included in the initial training. Um, we're still monitoring residents' weights and addressing any concerns that come up. Um, we're still providing the nourishment that's uh, required from the ministry. It's just how we offer that choice. And we're not making assumptions about what people want and when. Uh, we're just offering more choice above and beyond that throughout the day so that they have more options. <laughs> So it is the bewitching hour, and I must say thank you so much to both of you for your passion and commitment to enhance quality of life for the residents at Sunnyside. I, as you said earlier in your presentation, Julie, it, change takes time, and uh, you, you took your time, and, and, and COVID and all its phases, Omicron, and certainly impacted everyone. But some maybe that helped you a little. You you expanded it out a few years and you got your ducks in a row, so to speak, and then you were able to move forward. And anyway, you've done a marvelous job and it's very interesting. And I wonder if those people who didn't get their questions asked, if they could just email you uh, with their questions, would that be all right with you? Absolutely. We'd welcome any questions. We're happy to provide any additional information and uh, also open to hosting a tour if people would like to come and see as well. Thanks so much again, and I'm now going to turn it over to Sam. Thank you so much uh, to, uh, to you, Lindsay and Julie, for the presentation uh, and for the work you've done to really transform Sunnyside into a place where people can be proud to, to live, work, uh, and care. Uh, it was an inspiring presentation, and Judging by the questions that come in, I am sure folks will follow up with you to learn more about your journey and how they can take some of the same steps in their long-term care home. And thank you to Marg and Kathy uh, from CARP for supporting, uh, really helping to pull this all together and to, to really to make it happen. And I'm going to give a uh, another Thank you to Leah Cabral on uh, my team for their work helping to pull this together and promote the session, bringing you folks to, to this space with us today. In, on October 25th, we're going to be hosting the next event in the series called Color Your Way. We're going to be welcoming Jennifer Cornell to share the story of Gray County's long-term cares Great County Long-Term Care's Culture Change Through the Journey, uh, Culture Change Journey, wow, Through the Power of Creating a Shared Purpose. So October 25th at noon, we are back with the next webinar in our series. We can learn about how another long-term care home is changing culture to make their space a vibrant place to live, work, and care. So once again, on behalf of the speakers, the FCO team and the CARP Ottawa team, thank you so much for joining us today. If you're joining live, stay tuned for the announcement of the recording of this session and please share it widely with your networks. Once again, thank you so much. Stay well, uh, take care and we'll see you soon.